Well, hello. I wanted to bring you along on a bit of an adventure. My dad left me an old Zeiss Icon Netar medium format folding camera. There's not much left of it, but here's a picture. So these were six by nine medium format cameras. Um, they were made for an amateur market. Uh, and they weren't really nice cameras. They were made in the 30s and 40s. Uh, and I, I tested this one out before I destroyed it. Uh, you're seeing this midway through this process. Um, I tested this one out and found that I didn't particularly like the images that it produced uh, when it actually produced images. And it would, of course, cost a lot of money to get it tip-top able to shoot. Uh, so I have decided to use it to make a pinhole camera. Now, as you know, I have been shooting my Zero Image 2000 pinhole camera for the last year or so, having a whole lot of fun with it, and I'm completely satisfied with it and actually don't really want another pinhole camera, but what else am I going to do with this? The thing is, old folders like this, old medium format folders, are really good for destroying and then using the film transport system. The hardest part of building a pinhole camera at least in my very limited experience, I haven't done it in a long time, is getting something to transport the film across the focal plane. Uh, and so this is basically a ready-made light-tight box. Well, it, it was. A ready-made light-tight box with a film transport system. So I started looking into the measurements of it and what kind of pinhole camera that would create. And obviously it would be a 6x9 format uh, pinhole camera. But I think the focal length will be less than 30 meters. So it's going to be super duper ultra wide. So I thought I'd bring you guys along on this process and uh, see what kind of images we produce. Let's get to it. First, protect your eyes. I'm pretty sure I'm just going to leave most of the internals in there. But I'm going to take out this, which is what held the shutter. I've already taken out the bellows, obviously. Um, I think the easiest way to do this is just going to be to cut these little arms off right here. So, let's do it. Okay, so here is what we have after we've taken out all the internals except for those arms and stuff like that. And um, this is the, the focal plane. We're looking at the back end of the camera here. This is what the camera will look like. And now I am going to drill a hole for our pinhole aperture. All right, so I've marked out the center of the door, which I did confirm uh, is actually centered over the film plane. Uh, and so I think I'm just gonna drill a starter hole here, like so. Uh, let's see how bad I messed it up. Here we go. Now we're just going to enlarge that to about 7.30 seconds. Boom! Perfect! Alright, so as you can see, the hole is a little bit off-center there, but that's okay, because we're going to be making a, a pinhole plate out of an old drink can, uh, and we can position the pinhole wherever we want. All right, so I've cut out a piece of the Coke can and using a sewing needle or a pin that I have pilfered from my wife's sewing table, I'm gonna make a hole right here. So here you can see that you're actually able to make um, different size pinholes depending on how much pressure you put on the pin and all that. Uh, who knows what the right size is, so we're just gonna go with the smallest one. All right, now we're going to attach that little sliver of tin to the inside of the camera with a piece of the pinhole photographer's best friend, electrical tape. All right, there it is. And uh, it should go without saying at this point that um, this is just a prototype. Uh, we're going to clean it up as best we can, tape it up against light leaks, and go shoot it. But uh, if it actually, if the images look good, I'll order a correctly sized pinhole and uh, we'll make some upgrades. All right, so here's what the front of the camera looks like, and the shutter for now will just be a piece of tape that we'll put on and off there. Um, and uh, the back of the camera is kind of what I'm worried about. 
the interior is what I'm concerned about. We've got some light leaks around the uh, the buttons, which of course are no longer useful. Um, so we might have to uh, put some tape in here as well. All right, so we're in the uh, in the bathroom here, giving it the old flashlight and a dark room test. And I don't think I'm going to be able to show this to you, uh, but there is a tremendous light leak. Uh, hang on. So these are really interesting old cameras and they were designed to be shot vertically. So they had a little stand here and the hinge around this little stand, which would have helped it uh, to stay vertical, hinge around the stand is what's leaking. I don't know if you guys can see that, but that little bit of light right there would have absolutely obliterated our images. Boom, we're out of the house. I'm not even wearing my waders. Let's go shoot some photos. I have discovered that the best thing to do when you're worried about whether or not your camera is actually light tight is go shoot it and see if you ruin the film. So here we go. So it's been a while since I've shot a video about shooting my pinhole camera. So I'm gonna take you guys through the process just a little bit. Uh, one thing to note is I had to get a um, tripod thread adapter because back in the day they made tripod mounts with these giant threads on there. So I had to get an adapter that would fit a modern tripod plate. And uh, this is the only part of any of this that costs any money. This was seven bucks on Amazon. Speaking of money, I really probably should spend some money on a tripod head that could hold my phone while I talk to you. But I think by now you've probably gotten the feeling that I'm a little bit informal about this stuff. All right, we're going to load up with Delta 100 here. Boom like so. Uh, one thing that's cool is this camera actually has, it's got a very uh, manual wind there and this is an old, old metal film take-up reel. Uh, I think it says Kodak on it actually, so it's probably from the, yeah it does say Kodak, probably from the, uh, you know, years before the internet. No, nope, that's not it. There we go. Okay, so if you've never played around with 120 film, it's bigger than 35 millimeter. Most most people think of 35 millimeter when they think of film, and you've actually got a, a paper backing that uh, is the only thing you touch. You um, feed it into the take-up spool like so, and then in theory you take it up. Although it almost never works on the first try. There we go, just like that. And then close the door. Hope it's light tight. And you've got a little red window here, and you wind that until you can see the frame numbers. Uh, on the backing paper, and that's when you know you're ready to shoot. Frame number one, let's go. Okay, well we've got a big storm rolling in, and I am standing beneath the church steeple. So here's what we're looking at. We got this obelisk sort of thing here, and it's, I've juxtaposed it right there with the steeple. It's a perfect vertical shot, and this is going to be a super wide camera, I hope. Uh, so this should be a good test. Uh, here's my process. I'm going to meter the scene with my uh, with my little digital camera here and transfer that metering to the pinhole camera using the parameters from my zero image pinhole camera. So pretty imprecise. Okay, the official metered reading is one two hundredth of a second. And on the back of the zero image, we find that one two hundredth of a second equates to about two seconds, which is a damn fast exposure. But fast is good when you're under a lightning rod. Are we ready? Are we ready to do this? Here we go. Here we go. Two seconds. One, two. Pinhole cameras have infinite depth of field. So I've got this, uh, this gravestone here, a, sort of a near-far combination lined up against those windows. And now I've gotten closer. We're gonna test the sight lines of the camera with one exposure. I should have uh, that white column and that window right there, both in this frame. So I can already tell that the tape arrangement for the shutter is not gonna work out too well. Getting loads of camera shake. And uh, that's okay when the exposure's like four minutes long. It's not okay when it's two seconds long. So that was four exposures. That's half the roll. <clears throat> Speed bump. Uh, so now I'm going to go to a place that's a little shadier. Maybe we'll get some longer exposures. Well, there's 
people shooting up under the bridge. So do I just wait till they're whatever they're going to be? Ah, it's just kids having fun, you know? I mean, it's, it's 5 o'clock on a Friday. Well, too bad about those cars parked there, but uh, this should be an interesting final shot on the roll. Alright, well I just finished developing this film here in the kitchen sink. It needs to wash for 20 minutes, but I did take a peek and the results are going to be interesting. Okay, so, mistakes were made. Things were not taken into account. Let's look at these negatives. Using my extra professional light box here, I can show you that the image area is much smaller than the six by nine negative. Um, and you know, that's okay. Um, but I'm also seeing that the negative, uh, the image does not fade into darkness. There's, there's still density there, which means there's a lot of fog bouncing around on the inside of the camera. Uh, let's look at these pictures. So, on one hand, this is a success. We got images. There were no light leaks. That's good. On the other hand, um, I, I neglected to do any math before I did this, and I did, not, um, I did not account for the fact that the focal length, which is about 26 millimeters uh, with a pinhole, is not enough to make an image circle big enough to cover 6x9 film. So... Unless I make like some sort of contraption to put the put the pinhole up here, um, it's never going to cover six by nine. So why shoot a six by nine camera? Except I really like the way that the uh, that the images are sort of frayed around the edges. And the other mistake that I made uh, was not making this hole big enough, and so we can actually see the ragged edges of the leatherette cover in some of the images, uh, which is really interesting. I kind of like the look actually, but I think I will enlarge it uh, and see if we can get a cleaner pinhole image. I'm pretty, I'm pretty impressed with the way that the, that the images, the sharpness or lack thereof is, is pretty pleasing to my eye. Uh, and I like, the, I like the way that it's just kind of a floating circle. Um, we'll see, after I increase the size of this little window, uh, we'll see what that looks like, but I, you know, it was a fun way to, to spend an afternoon, if nothing else. I don't know if I'll use this camera um, going forward, but um, you know, it was just laying around, N nothing else to do with it. And you know, maybe I'll send it to some uh, pinhole geek out there who could have more fun with it than me. Anyway, uh, I'll keep you updated if I do anything more with this. Thank you so much for watching and for looking at my images. Go follow me at Gribbly's Folly on Instagram and keep the ends out for the ties that bind.